Hey folks, this is Tom with Linux for the Windows guy. Um, we are uh, going to cover today how to build a domain controller on Linux, a Windows domain controller but running on a a Linux box, and this allows it to serve Windows clients. As always, this channel may be redundant for some Linux Jedi. Um, the idea is to explain things in a very detailed step-by-step -step process so that they make sense to someone who may be very familiar with Windows and be a great IT person in that field but doesn't have a lot or any Linux experience. Um, and we'll always have like neat projects like this to, to do stuff that can become a part of your Windows network, augment it, make it better, make it cheaper, stretch the budget with open source but we still realize and and understand here that you know Windows desktops are going to be around. Windows is going to own the desktop for a long long time and um, while there are some limited environments where everybody runs Linux it's just not going to be in the mainstream like Windows is. However when we can take processes that run on the back end and get rid of some of these licensing costs it really helps the IT budget. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm using a hypervisor by Oracle known as VirtualBox. Um, this hypervisor allows me to, you know, create machines. Um, whenever I talk about the host, I'm talking about my PC that I'm running on here. When I'm talking about the guest, I'm talking about the virtual machine that I'm creating to work within. Um, you can download this free, like I said, at virtualbox.org. You click next a few times and install it. It's great for if you're doing testing, experimentation, that kind of stuff. You don't have to set up 10 boxes on your workbench with 10 monitors and 10 keyboards. You can do it all right from your desktop. Um, so I'll click new here because I'm going to create a new guest, a new uh, virtual machine. And I'm going to name this AD1 for Active Directory 1. It'll be running on Linux. So we'll select Linux. And this is going to be running on CentOS 6.5. Um, which is really uh, very similar to Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux. So we will select Red Hat 64-bit as the version. Um, this is the folder already exists and possibly belongs to another virtual machine. Um, okay, let me delete that folder real quick here, folks. That's what I get for having deleted this, done this, and deleted it already. Okay. Um, also, I want to tell you that uh, you will see like a link to the virtual box down below, a link to the Samba website down below, and you will also find a link to where you can download this document right here, which has all of the commands that I'm going to be typing today um, for your reference. Um, so, uh, 81 Linux, Red Hat, click next. Um, it's set at 512. Uh, that would be fine when it's running. That would be enough for what we're doing here. I'm going to give it 2 gigs right now while I'm setting it up just to help it run a little faster while I'm setting it up. Um, but I'll probably can drop that down once it's in production to 512 and it will be just fine. Um, I'm going to create a virtual hard disk now. And I'm going to do the virtual box disk image. I'm going to do this as a dynamic disk, which means it's only going to put locate the space into a file as I need it in the guest. So it only takes space off my host as it's used by the guest machine. And 8 gigs is probably enough. I'm just going to go ahead and bump this up to 20. Um, and now we're powered off. I want to change a couple things by right clicking, going to settings, and I would like to go ahead and give this thing a couple of extra processors. Yeah, we'll set it for three CPUs. And I would also need to change my net. I want my network adapter in bridged adapter mode. NAT puts it in its own little firewall network. I just want it to be a part of my regular network, so I put it in bridged mode. Okay, with that, we are ready to power up this machine and uh, start getting things installed. Now, it comes up here and it says, hey, select a virtual optical disk file or physical drive. So if you had Red Hat on, or a CentOS on a DVD, you can put it in your drive and map it. I just downloaded the ISO file 
um, and I did not burn it to any DVD. So I can just go out here and browse and find the ISO file for DVD1. Just click it, open it, and say start. And it'll map that just into the guest. It'll look just like a regular CD drive. Okay, so we're going to say that we want to install and upgrade an existing system. And we're going to let this run. Okay, and we're going to skip testing the CD drive because we don't need to do that. We're going to click next here so that we can install. We're going to do English. I'm going to do US English. And I want basic storage. And I, you can discard my data. I don't have anything in this virtual disk. And I'm going to name it 81. And that is my time zone, so I don't have to change anything there. And put in a password. Just something simple. And it'll probably tell me it's weak. And I'll say, yeah, just use it anyway. This is not a production server, so I'm not worried about it. Um, in fact, I would choose a simple root password because you have to reboot several times and everything, and then you can change root's password afterwards. Um, replace an existing Linux system, or replace any existing ones, sure, because there is nothing there. Okay, um, now it gives me one final chance. I want to say, yep, write the changes. I'm ready to do it. It's going to format all these out for me. And now I'm going to choose minimal for my type. You can choose a full desktop. You can do a minimal desktop. You could probably do any of these and it'll work just fine. I don't need a GUI. I don't need all that stuff. Um, so I'm not going to install it. If you feel more comfortable having a GUI and opening up a terminal window to do this, by all means, you know, you can do that. Um, so I'm just going to say next. If I can click it, oh, well, that's interesting. Looks like my mouse is off. Well, it, well, there we go. Okay. Sometimes that kind of happens in a virtual machine, like your real mouse gets kind of separated from your virtual mouse. So now it's going to install. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and we'll be back when it's done installing. Okay, it's gone ahead and finished the install. It's congratulated us and it wants us to reboot. So we're going to click reboot. And it's going to reboot. I'll go ahead and pause this and we'll be back when it's booted up. Okay, we're booted up and we're at our main login prompts. We're going to type in our login name. And we're going to type in our password that we did during the install. And we're at our pound prompt. Um, so there's some things that we want to start to do. And um, I have these in the list. And uh, the, again, you can download this list with the link below. But first, we're going to edit our network configuration. Edit IF config ETH0. By the way, once you've typed enough of a uh, command or directory for it to be unique, you can use the tab key to auto complete it. And that's what I was doing as I was typing this. And if it doesn't work, you can hit tab twice for it to show you all the options that match what you've typed so far. Okay, so we're going to go in here. We're going to change a few things. The first thing is where we're, this is a VI, by the way. If you're not familiar with VI, make sure you go onto Google, 
uh, search for like a VI tutorial. There's plenty of them out there that'll teach you the basics. But basically, it's a text editor, but it's kind of old school. And what we're going to do is hit our insert key, and that's going to allow us to now make changes in here. So we want to change this to yes. I'm going to come down here and change DHCP to static. And I'm going to put in my uh, information for my IP address and everything. That I want for this computer. 10.1. We type today. And this will be 150. Then it's going to be NetMask. It's going to be gateway. And let me jump, double check my notes to make sure there is nothing else that we need to change, and there's not. So we are done editing this. We'll do a right quit. Um, oh, hang on. We're going to hit escape. Let me tell you this hit escape. That takes you out of the insert mode. You see how we had the little insert thing at the bottom when we hit insert? We hit escape, and that goes away. Now you type a colon and you type a W and a Q for write and quit. Okay, now we want to restart our network. And the command for that is service network restart. And that will bring our interface online. Um, now we're going to disable a couple of things. And one of them is going to be the SE Linux, which is like a app guard type thing for Linux. Um, so we don't want that. It messes with the domain controller and Samba. So we just disable it. And this is going to be, again, we did the VI. We come in here. Now we hit insert to go into the mode where we can edit it. And we're going to change this from enforcing to disable. We're going to escape, colon, right quit. Okay. And uh, now we want to turn off our IP tables. And this is. Oops, hang on. Okay. So we're going to do service. Uh, or IP tables, by the way, if you're not familiar, is your firewall in Linux. Um, so think of it as the Windows firewall. Uh, we don't want that for our domain controller. We're going to turn it off. If you want to search around on your own, there are some some documents out there how to get your domain controller to work with IP tables enabled. In my environment, I already have adaptive security appliance. I keep my servers in their own little separate uh, zone, and I monitor all the traffic going to them. So I really don't need another firewall. Okay, and now we're going to do check config. Uh, the service IP table stop, stops the services. Now we want to make it so they don't start again at startup. So it's check config IP tables off. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And that will make it so the firewall doesn't start up again. So now we want to go to a VI slash etsy slash resolve dot com this is where your dns servers go in for your linux distro how it's going to resolve names for the internet there will be nothing in here now um, we're going to do uh, two lines in here we're going to do a search for our domain name I'm going to call this frugal.local. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'm going to look it up cold. Um, the name surfer is going to be 8.8.8.8. We're going to hit escape, colon, WQ to write and quit, and save that file. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is just do a ping real quick of some <coughs> <coughs> something on the internet, um, like www.google.com. You see it resolves the address, and it's pinging it. We'll do Control-C to stop that ping, and now we'll be ready to run our updates.
so we want to update all the software that's on the server this is like windows update except it's text based if you install the GUI uh, CineOS there is a package manager where you can update from within the GUI um, we're just going to do it here and it's yum and yum's what you use to update install and remove all of the pre-configured packages for the uh, CineOS distribution so we'll do yum space update space dash y so it'll answer yes to all the questions and just update them <coughs> so this is going to run for a while and download search and download for all the updates so I'm going to pause this while the updates run okay so now our updates have finished running and I've gone ahead and set the screen so that it'll be a little bit easier to see as I go through and start typing the rest of these commands um, so basically what we want to do now is install some prerequisite packages now you can do this a couple of different ways and I've, I've listed them both way on my uh, direction of commands um, you can do yum install and then put all the package names glib c dash devel you know and gcc problem is, is if you make a typo you, you may miss a package and then it causes problems later so I actually like to just go through them one at a time and do yum install glib c and if I spelled it right it works better and we'll let it install the glibc you can also do a dash y on that so it won't ask you anything like question wise and you know it's going to tell us oh see that one's already installed so we don't have to worry about that one um, since these are packages that are very important for it to work right i just put them in the instructions to make sure uh, they do get installed in case they made a change in a future version or something and it didn't get installed with the minimal install and you would just follow through each of these for the list um, that is on uh, that's in the directions um, and it, this will take a while to go through all of these um, but like I said you can download the list below I'm not going to let the video run this whole time that I'm doing this I'll just come back when I have each of these prerequisite packages installed and ready to go okay I've now installed all of my prerequisite packages and we're ready to uh, start uh, getting our Samba source code downloaded and installed um, so what I want to do first is make a directory off a of root and it's going to be slash samba dash master and now I'm going to change to that same directory now what I can do is just type cd slash and type sa so that it's unique enough from any other directory off of root and hit my tab key and it'll fill the rest in for me and now I'm in that directory if I type pwd you can see the full uh, directory path that I'm in slash samba master and now I want to make sure there's no previous versions of Samba real quick so for that I'm going to do a yum remove Samba asterisk and since this is a minimal install there is no previous version of Samba if you did a different type of install you may have a version of Samba and you want to remove those because uh, it's probably going to be like Samba version 3 dot something which is not what we want and even if you had some before from the repositories from the packages that come through yum um, it would be 4.0 and we would definitely want to get the latest stable release which as of now is 4.1.12 um, and you can go to samba's homepage samba.org and you'll see what the latest stable release number is and you would just modify this next command to reference that release number um, so we're going to do a wget http colon slash slash and wget allows you to download files from a URL um, which is kind of nice when you don't have a text only command line and you don't have a browser handy uh, 
let me go over here and see the rest of the commands. Yeah, stable. And then it's going to be slash samba uh, dash four dot one dot one two dot tar dot gz. Now be aware that the only versions, only stable versions, will be out here. And if they come out with a new stable version, you want to make sure you look at the front page because say next week the latest version might be 4.1.15 so you would just change that to be samba-4.1.15 simple enough I think so, oh, I put too many T's I did HTTTP there we go oh not found oh. let's see if I spelled everything right samba.org slash FTP HTTP FTP slash stable slash samba dash four dot one dot one two dot oh I got TST it's supposed to be T A R dot G Z and still not found <laughs> sometimes it's the simple commands that get you FTP slash stable oh they're supposed to be a slash samba slash FTP slash stable there we go now it's gonna go download it for us alright we have that let's do a list I wanna see the attributes of the file just for curiosity so I'm gonna do a dash LA uh, or AL doesn't matter and we see we have the file um, it's uh, what uh, 19 megs so it's not a real big file uh, now we want to untar this file um, so the command is going to be tar and then it's going to be dash x which is for extract z because it's a ggip and f because we're going to do it from a file and uh, S A M V A, and I can just hit tab and it'll auto complete this for me because it's the only file out there. I really wouldn't have to just type but an S. I bet, let's just see, I bet you could just do this and hit tab, yeah, because it's the only file in the directory. Enter, okay, and now if we do an ls l a again, we'll see now. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the blue. But it's got a Samba-4.1.12 there. So now I'm going to do CD space tab because there's only one directory in this directory. So I don't I really have to type anything for it to autocomplete. And now if I do a PWD again, I see my current directory that I'm in, Samba master, Samba-4.1.12. So now I'm ready to uh, basically get started installing this if I do an ls la here I see all of these files and that's my script or my source code I mean to say um, so now there's going to be a configure script in this source code um, and so I want to run that configure to go configure all these files now um, the command is dot slash configure I like to do dash dash enable self test um, so that it you know tests everything as it does it and then I like to do dash dash enable dash debug which shows you everything it's doing just because I really like to get my geek on right I want to see it oh no and see here it's telling us it couldn't find a C compiler and that should have been in our list of installed stuff prerequisites that should have been glibc. Maybe I missed it. It's possible. Let me see. Uh, yum. Install. Uh, glib. Let's see. It's installed. And then the glibc dash deval. Um. Let's try GCC. There's the one I missed. And you know why I missed it? Because I didn't put it in my one by one list, even though it's in my 
main one. So I'll update my notes here real quick. Well, I'll update those in a minute. Let's go on with the video. Because this next process is going to take a while. So now we're doing the dot slash configure, dash dash enable self, enable dash self test, dash dash enable dash debug. And it's going to go through a whole bunch of stuff. If you see a few little errors, errors or warnings, scroll by. Don't worry too much about it. Um, unless it stops with the red error message like it did before on me. Um, everything is good. Um, and so I will be back here in a few minutes when this is done. Okay, so my initial configure is done now. So what I'm going to do, um, it says it's finished successfully. And so now we're going to do our make to actually compile the source code. And it's just going to go through and compile all these and then write like the binaries uh, out in subdirectories under this directory. And then after we're done with that, we'll install those binaries onto the system. So what we're going to do is type make and press enter. And this is going to take a while. Um, so, you know, go have a cup of coffee, talk with your friends at the water cooler, pet the cat if you're at home, watch a little bit of Stargate SG-1, and then uh, come back and this will hopefully be done. And we'll be back here in just a split second through the magic of YouTube after it's done. Real quick, I'm just going to say here as this is compiling, you'll see some some warnings about commands being deprecated and stuff like that. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, everything's going to work fine. While the commands might be deprecated, uh, they're still working as of this point. And I'm sure they'll update their source code eventually, but, you know, they just haven't got around to it yet. So just let it go. Okay, so now our uh, source code has uh, compiled. And um, what we're going to go ahead and do now is install the compiled source code. And for that, we're going to use the command make space install. And this, again, is going to take a few minutes. So um, I will uh, be back when this is finished. Okay, so our make install has finished. And that means that we now have all of our uh, like binary stuff and everything installed for Samba and so uh, what I want to do is go ahead and add a couple of directories to my path now you would not uh, have to do this and I do give all the commands in my documentation with the full path typed in front of them However, if you do this, instead of having to every time type slash user slash local slash samba slash bin slash at samba dash tool, you can just type samba dash tool. Okay. Um, so it does make things a lot in, in your life a little bit easier and help eliminate some typing. So what we'll do is do VI. Uh, let me click on the screen here and activate it. Okay. VI. And we're going to do slash Etsy slash profile. And if I hit tab twice, it shows me all of them that match pro file dot d slash custom dot sh. Now this will be a new file. It doesn't exist by default. Um, but we're just going to add a couple of commands in here that we want to run whenever our shell starts. And this will be path. Oh, I have to hit, I had to hit insert first. So insert um, path. Munge sounds like a disease, doesn't it? Path munge slash uh, path munge. There's no equals. I'm sorry, path munge slash user slash local slash samba slash bin. And the user is, of course, USR, not USER. Path munge slash USR slash local slash samba slash sbin. Okay, and that's all we have to do there. We hit escape, type a colon, right quit, and now that file has been added. So now that we've done all this, compiled all this source code, done all these updates, and changed our path command, it's time to just go ahead and do a reboot of this guy before we actually start configuring the domain. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now with the command shutdown now dash r and dash r is for reboot 
and it'll go ahead and shut down and I'll be back as soon as it is back up okay so we're back up I have uh, gone ahead and logged back in as root and I'm ready to start provisioning my domain and we'll hope that this goes smoothly um, so we'll go ahead and do samba dash tool domain space provision and it'll help if I spell it right I'm still getting used to this new ergonomic keyboard I had to get this special Microsoft weird keyboard because I got the Carpo Tunnel or Carpal Tunnel or whatever they call it anyway my health insurance sucks I can't afford the surgery um, it's in Senta or no never mind I said that it's uh, frugal dot local and the domain is going to be just frugal and then I want it to be a domain controller so whatever you see there in braces at the end is the default option which is DC so I can just press enter and for right now I'm going to be doing Samba internal uh, when we set up a after probably after this series of videos um, I will go through and cover how you set up a uh, uh, Bendy backend for your DNS so that you can have it on multiple servers but for right now we're just going to do the Samba internal to keep it simple um, and then this is where we put the uh, forwarding address so if Samba doesn't know it if it's not a, an internal Windows system or server then it's going to forward that off to a real DNS server now this could be a real DNS server inside your network but most likely you just want to point it to one on the internet I'm just going to use Google server of 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. um, and then we do uh, what we want our administrator password to be now for my root password I didn't choose a complex password this will give you an error if you don't have one complicated enough I think it's got to be like eight characters have an upper and lower case symbol number um, so it's three of those four it has to be eight characters long and three of the four uppercase lowercase number symbol so choose three of those so I'm gonna put in a password And hopefully it's going to create and set up all my Active Directory stuff without any errors. Okay, so there we have it. It's created my domain on the host name of AD1. And the domain name is frugal. And the DNS domain is frugal.local. So that's all happy stuff. Um, so now what we want to do is go ahead and add our uh, Samba services uh, so that they will start automatically now the other services that we would do like when we did IP tables and turned it off you would use the check config command the chk config the name of the uh, package and then on or off or the name of the daemon and then on or off or service um, however since we compiled this this didn't install with the packages we put this on ourselves this won't isn't known to yum it won't get updated by yum which is okay with me because I would rather go and update it and test it and on my own rather than having uh, yum do it itself and then having a bug get introduced on my network go down with its regular updates um, so I prefer to compile Samba just on my own for something this complex uh, like as a domain controller so we want it to start so we actually have to go and add it to a script uh, to get it to start at startup and that script is going to be located we're going to do vi and it's located at etsy slash rc dot d slash rc dot local and we see this is uh, uh, the stuff that's going to be executed after all the other init scripts and the servers up so we're going to hit insert here so that we can type we're going to press enter and make a new line and we're going to say slash user now I'm putting the full path here because I don't think at this point you haven't logged into the shell so it hasn't run that custom sh so you need to put the full path here uh, for stuff you want to start up and it's just that simple 
so slash usr slash local slash samba slash or slash et, yeah slash samba slash sbin slash samba which is the actual file and we're going to do escape colon wq for write and quit and that's done and now what we're going to do is just reboot one more time and this will we after we provisioned our domain and this will also start the samba for us when it comes back up so now we'll do shutdown space now dash r and I'll be back right after this is done rebooting okay so I've gone ahead and rebooted I've logged back in as root and um, what we want to do now is make sure Samba's running and uh, we'll make sure that that service is up and running and for that we're going to use the command ps dash ax and that will list all the services that are running I don't want to see them all so I'm going to put a pipe that's usually the shift and above your enter key it's the shift backslash key um, and then we're going to type grep, which I kind of think of grep as like grab. Uh, and basically, it goes out and grabs the, the lines that have the characters you specify. I'm looking for lines that contain the word samba. And we see there's a whole bunch of sambas running. Okay, now, if you didn't do this right, you'll just see the one that's at the bottom here, which is grep samba, which is the grep process running itself okay you won't see all these other ones that are running so that means that our samba server is running and happy and that's what we want to see it means we did that startup command right okay so um, now we want to verify our samba versions just to make sure that we're not running some other strange version although we shouldn't be because we made sure there was no others installed but it doesn't hurt to double check so we're going to do samba dash v and that's what we would expect would be 4.1.12 and we want to make sure our client is also the correct version uh, and we're going to do dash dash version on this one and we see it's also 4.1.12 so that is all happy times um, so now we want to check some other settings and um, such as our uh, DNS forwarder and stuff. So I'm going to show you how we check this. So we're going to do vi slash user slash local slash samba slash etsy slash smb dot conf. And that's our samba configuration file. And we want to verify that that DNS forwarder setting is set to the uh, real internet DNS server that we would like to resolve entries through. And we see that it is. Okay, so now what we need to do is make sure that all of our local DNS requests from the server actually hit Samba first and check and see if Samba has anything. And if Samba doesn't, it then forwards it off to a real DNS server to get resolved. Um, because remember when we first set it up just to get on the internet, we set our DNS to be to Google's server. Um, and we really want to redirect them through our own server first. Then they go, and if it can't find it, if it's not a Windows a box in the domain, then it then goes out and finds it on the internet and hands it back to us. So we're going to hit escape. And we're going to type colon Q because we're not writing anything. We didn't make any changes. So we just want to quit. And now we want to go and look at our uh, master DNS uh, file for the server, which is slash Etsy slash resolve without the e dot conf and we come down here and we see that this name server is set to 8.8.8.8 we don't want that we want it to point back to our own server so you probably could put like a 127 dot whatever in here however if you ever get multiple interfaces in a server uh, Samba will be listening on different interfaces so I always like to make sure I specify the actual IP address of the server here so I'll hit my insert key I'll use my delete key to delete this one out and then I'm going to type 10.100.110.150 which is the IP address of my server I'm going to hit escape type a colon and a write and a quit for WQ and now that is set um, so now we want to also put a entry in on our network interface uh, so that there may be some programs that look at that as well for the DNS information and so what we're going to do is do vi uh, slash etsy 
slash sys config slash network dash scripts and slash uh, uh, if con uh, config cfg dash eth zero and then we'll hit enter and now we're just going to go down to the very bottom of this hit insert and we're going to put in this line dns1 equals 10.100.110.150 and I like to put a little note in here so that if somebody else looks at it must be set to this host IP for Samba it has to work. Yeah, put a little note, something like that in there. Okay, and then we'll do escape colon WQ and save it. And um, now we can scroll down. And we want to basically go ahead and verify our DNS. And um, there's some real specific little records that uh, uh, have to be set for workstations and stuff to find a domain controller. They're going to look for these records off of your domain dot whatever um, whenever they're looking for a domain controller in Active Directory. So what we're going to do is type host dash t. If host doesn't work. It is probably because you forgot to install the bind utils with the prerequisite packages. Um, so just to let you know. Um, dash underscore LDAP dot underscore TCP dot my domain dot, or that's in my example. This would be dot frugal dot local. And there's going to be one trailing period. And says it has a server record um, so we're happy with that now we want to check that it has a Kerberos record which it needs to be able to authenticate to the domain and so that's going to again be a serve and then underscore k-e-r-b-e-r-o-s Kerberos dot underscore and this is UDP instead of TCP uh, dot frugal dot local with a trailing period and that one has a serve record so we're happy with that now we're going to do host dash t a we're looking for the a record for ad1 my server name dot frugal dot local and we see it comes back with the IP address of the server um, so that's all good stuff Okay, now we need to set up our Kerberos so that all the authentication stuff will work correctly. And um, what we're going to do is basically rename the original Kerberos uh, configuration file and copy a sample one that comes with our Samba that we installed in its place. So we're going to type mv space slash etsy slash krb5.conf and then we're going to do uh, we're going to move that to slash etsy slash krb5.com and then I'm going to come back here and type dot .org for original and press enter. And now I'm going to copy the sample one from slash user slash local slash samba slash share slash setup slash krb5.com but I want to put that into slash etsy slash krb5.com take off the dot ridge because I hit tab to auto complete that and now if we do uh, vi slash etsy slash krb5.com we'll see this is the sample file we just want to change this one line in here I'll hit my insert key we're going to go over, we're going to take out this variable, and we're going to put in the actual our actual domain name in all capital letters, which is frugal.local. 
Okay. So uh, now um, we're ready to go ahead and test our Kerberos to make sure that it is working correctly. And for that, we want to type K I N I T admin is straighter at F R U G A L dot L O C I A L. It's going to ask us for our password. This will be the password when we set up the domain with the domain provision. Um, now let me see if I typed it right. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. It should have worked. Let me just get it. A D M I N I S E R A T O R at F U G A L dot L O C A L. Okay. Pre authentication fail. Let me just try it without the at frugal. It should automatically put that on there. Yep. Hmm. That's all correct. Uh, we may need to restart our Samba after doing this. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, see, sometimes this crazy stuff happens. Let's do ps dash ax pipe samba or grep samba. And let's do kill one, one, two, six. And then let's, let's go ahead and start samba. Let's make sure it's running. Okay, now let's go ahead and type. Our command. Okay, folks, let me figure this out real quick and I'll be back. I don't want to keep you on here the whole time. I've made a typo somewhere in one of my configuration files, I'm pretty sure. Okay, folks, it turned out everything was right. I had done everything right. I just needed to do a reboot and then it came back up. Uh, probably needed to reinitialize something. Um, so, uh, I will go ahead and add that into my notes after um, you uh, do the um, Kerberos setup and edit the config file. Uh, and you just need to go ahead and do a reboot. Um, that way, we'll know. And I'm putting that in my notes right now. So, you'll have the latest information when I put this video up. <laughs> Okay, and so now we're ready to go ahead and do our last step to configure our domain controller, which is simply do service NTP start. No, I'm sorry, it's NTPD for daemon start. And then check config NTP D on, which will tell it to start that whenever the server starts up. That's it. We now have a fully functioning domain controller, and we're ready to join workstations to it. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and configure a quick uh, Windows 7 uh, PC uh, in the uh, virtual uh, machine within Oracle Box, and then that'll be the end of this video, which is how to set up the domain controller. And the next video is going to be on uh, joining your Windows 7 workstation to the domain, and um, how to uh, you install the remote server administration tools, how you administer Active Directory, the DNS, um, how you can administer shares, that kind of thing. Um, so that's going to be it for the here and now. Um, and I will be back on the next video and we'll take it to the next step.
Uh, thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, put them below. Um, like I said, I, I can't answer every single Linux question and I can't really answer a lot of questions on other distros because I'm primarily a CentOS guy. But if you have a specific question about these steps, please be sure to post it below and I will try to get back with you. Thanks.